Ellendorf from Midwest Laboratories. We're here in the field uh, just kind of doing a little demonstration on how to do the stock nitrate test. So the key thing with the stock nitrate test is basically the corn plant, as it brings nitrogen in, it kind of uses the stock as a sink. So if it's got extra nitrogen, it'll sink a bunch into the stock and uh, it won't use it all. It won't pull it all up into the corn grain and make protein out of it. Uh, if it doesn't have enough, then it'll actually pull uh, everything it can out of the stock. It'll kind of cannibalize it a little bit. And the stock nitrate test is a way to judge whether, you know, you were kind of Goldilocks. You, you didn't have enough, so it cannibalized a lot out of the stock. You had too much, so there's a bunch left in the sink and the numbers are way high. Or, you know, you're just right. So those numbers are basically if you're 250 part per million or lower, you really were low, it cannibalized a lot out of the stock, you probably affected yield. If you're in that 250 to 700 part per million range, you're kind of marginal, looks like you're a little low, uh, might have impacted yield. If you're between 700 and 2000 part per million, uh, you've got the right amount, you're just right, and it had the uh, amount of nitrogen uh, left in the stock that it should have had enough to meet optimal yield or the yield that was possible that season and then if it's above 2000 then you had a, a whole bunch uh, left over and you, you had much more nitrogen making it into the plant than what the plant needed to fill out its grain. So to do the test the first thing we've got to do is of course look at an ear and we've got to make sure we're at black layer. So the test is calibrated to black layer and up to three weeks after black layer. So if you're a lot past that, then probably it's gonna be deteriorating and the number's gonna be low. If you're before black layer, frankly, uh, your number probably will be a little high because it's still pulling uh, nutrients out of that stock and nitrogen out of that stock and pushing it into the grain and making proteins out of it. So you've gotta give it till black layer to finish up. So the first thing we need to do is uh, we split the ear and we wanna be at black layer uh, in kernels at about the middle of the year. So not an exact science, I just split it and then I'm gonna check these kernels here and I basically just kind of use my thumbnail to, to pull off the end of that kernel and I look for black layer. Now in this case we're not quite there yet and I can squeeze in the kernel and kind of tell a little bit, you know, do I still have some milk down there? And I don't, I'm pretty much finished with making, uh, making starches. I don't have a lot of milk left in there but I'm not quite at black layer. So technically we should wait just a little bit longer and let that thing hit black layer. You know, maybe we're about oh, a week or two early um, and then it's gonna black layer and be fully mature. Once, once this black layer collapses in here, basically it's telling us that it cannot pull any more nutrients or sugars out of the plant and push them into the kernel. And at that point you're done with whatever you were doing, uh, pulling nitrogen out of the stock. But, you know, for an example here today, let's go ahead and cut the stock just like we are going to, even though we're not at black layer. And again, you should wait till you're fully at black layer. And when I say fully, at least the kernels in the middle of the ear are at black layer. The tip will black layer later, the, the butt will black layer quicker. The middle of the ear is kind of how the, the correlation, uh, or yeah, the correlation between the test and yield was developed. So we're gonna cut the stock just as an example. I like to use pruning shears. You can use a corn knife or maybe a large pocket knife, but those stocks are tough to cut when you get it late in the season here. So I use pruning shears, and the key thing with my pruning shears is I bought a pair that is eight inches long. So with the stock nitrate test, you take an eight inch section of stock starting six inches above the ground. And what I've done here is I've made a, a line on my handle basically at six inches. So I can put those pruning shears up against the plant, there's my six inch cut, and then I can put the shears up against the plant again, and there's my eight inch cut. So let's just do that quick. So again, six inches from uh, soil surface is where I make that first cut. That's about here. You know, you don't have to be exact, but you need to be pretty close. There's that first cut. We're gonna drop that stock, get out of our way. We don't really want the leaf sheaths all that bad. We just want the stock itself. And then the nice thing is we use the shears here is actually our measuring tool. So there's the pruning shears against the stock. There's my eight inch. Now don't cut your finger off, but there's my eight inch uh, section of stock for the stock nitrate test. Now, one thing you wanna do here is, you know, before you cut the stock, maybe give it a little squeeze and make sure it's solid. This stock isn't giving at all. So everything seems to be pretty solid in there. 
The next thing I always do is after I cut my little segment off is look at this vascular tissue, what I call the pith inside of the stock there, and make sure that's still connected to the rind, the outside of the stock. If it starts to separate away, generally the stock is deteriorating. Maybe that's disease, maybe that's just maturing, but you're losing uh, some of those nitrates. It's breaking down and you're not gonna find those numbers. And then you're gonna get lower numbers than what were probably there uh, if it weren't for the disease you're seeing or if it weren't for that additional uh, deterioration of that stock. So, you know, cut that, cut that uh, eight inch sec section off, look at the pith, make sure it's still attached to the rind. That's a really good looking sample right there. And again, you can, you can squeeze those stocks before you pull them like this one here's a little weak. Let's just go ahead and grab it. So again, six inches up. I've got the mark there on my handle. Get these out of the way so you guys can see it. Mark here on my handle, that's about six inches there. You drop it. Put the shears against it again. I need an eight inch section of stock. Right there's my eight inches. Now look here. We can see that this uh, stock has deteriorated some. You see the browning in there. You can kind of see it separated out from the rind. Uh, that's probably telling us that this might not be a good sample. Let's look at the other end here. Oh, there we go. See how that's deteriorated so much? See how I was able to squeeze that and it collapsed? This is probably gonna give us some low numbers and they're numbers that really aren't appropriate for the test. Um, so yeah, squeeze that stock before you cut it and don't take those plants uh, that have a lot of deterioration or stock rot in them. Again, you send it into the lab. I need about, uh, about a dozen of these is probably a pretty good sample size. Uh, you can send it into the lab a couple different ways. We have a plastic bag you can put them into. You can put them in our standard uh, uh, tissue bag or some guys will just uh, put a dozen of them together, wrap a little duct tape around there and write your sample ID on it, send it in the lab. We'll test it for nitrate, we'll report it back to you, and I kind of gave you that scale already. If you're below 250, you're definitely impacting yield. Uh, that 250 to 700 is kind of marginal. You may or may not have impacted yield. Uh, 750 to 2000 is optimal, and above 2000, you had more nitrates left in the stock than that plant needed to meet optimal yield. Now, you know, this is coming from uh, Iowa State, I believe did most of that work, so you kind of might want to go look at their documentation. If you're doing a lot of late season nitrogen application, I would expect that to push those numbers a little higher. I don't think that was part of their uh, uh, correlation to yield that they did. So, you know, all of it needs to be interpreted a little bit with a little grain of salt and what you're doing on your farm, but here's how you do the test. So, thank you very much. Tim Undorf with Midwest Labs.